Welcome to Death Stranding, it's Abyss, and in this video, I'm gonna talk about some tips and tricks that I wish I knew earlier in Death Stranding. Now remember to hit that like button and subscribe to help support the channel. All right, so after I've completed the story and have over 70 hours of gameplay, it's time to talk about some things I wish I knew earlier. All right, so first up is cargo management. At first, I was throwing everything onto my back and then I was transferring one thing to my left arm, to my right arm, to my boot clip, my grenade pouch. All you have to simply do is hit the triangle button and auto arrange your cargo. The system will optimize your cargo for you automatically, allowing you to travel through the open world faster, place more cargo on your back, and save you a ton of time. You're going to be doing a bunch of deliveries and going through each individual item will take a ton of time. Just simply press the triangle button and auto arrange your cargo. This will make your cargo management faster. All right, so now let's talk about delivering a heavy load. It's best if you can grab a vehicle to be a lot easier, but if it's early in the game or maybe you have to ditch your vehicle to go through an area, you'll notice that your character will shift the weight to the right or to the left. Now you can counterbalance that by just holding in the R2 and L2 button together, but your character will move extremely slow. But this will allow you to you know, travel when I'm having to worry about going left and right. So the way you can get around this though, is as long as you are running in a straight line, you can release the buttons and then you can start running again with a heavy load. It is when you start to make a quick turn, you'll need to hold the buttons in again. But you can make a slow turn and you can still travel and run fast with a heavy load. So just keep that in mind, when you're delivering a heavy load, you can run in a straight line so you don't have to hold the R2 and L2 button the whole time. Decontaminating suit. All clear. Defon, Welcome. Set. All right, next up, let's talk about parry with your strand. So if you're traveling through an enemy's territory, and you know you have to get a large cargo or you just want to get to the other side and you run into an enemy and you weren't able to sneak up behind them if you press the right button on the directional pad and select your strand all you have to do is hold them out with the l2 button and as soon as the enemy attacks you'll press the r2 button to parry with your strand this will give you an opportunity to bind them with your strand because they will be open for you to basically tie them up this is very simple to do, and even though I was playing on a hard difficulty, the window of opportunity was big. So it's very easy to parry with your strands if you do not have a weapon yet. Now there is a weapon called the Bola Gun, which will allow you to shoot from range. You still will have to walk up to them and kick them, but it is a great weapon to have. But let's just say you just didn't bring it with you, or maybe you don't have it yet. You can easily parry with your strand simply because the window of opportunity to counter it is big and it has probably close to a 100% success rate. All right, so let's talk about enemy vehicles and their post box. So certain enemy camps will have vehicles. You can steal that vehicle, drive it right next to their post box, get out, take everything out of the post box and load it onto your vehicle. Because if you park that vehicle right next to the post box, you'll be able to access the vehicle's cargo. So this is simple to do and it will save you a ton of time instead of grabbing all the items, throwing it on your back. If there is a vehicle available in the camp or if you bring your own vehicle, just park it right next to their post box, take everything out of it. This way you can go to a structure, upgrade it, build a new one, repair it, or just you know drop off any kind of lost cargo. Just use the vehicle and load everything onto it. it will save you a ton of time. Next up is BT markers. So when you're going through an area where there's a bunch of BTs, you'll have to crouch walk and then you'll stop, pulse, and then you'll be able to tell exactly where they're at. It is then that you'll want to hold the L1 button in and place a marker on that BT. Now that you know where that BT is at from the marker, you can either navigate around them or you can go up to them and cut their umbilical cord. Eventually, you're gonna get some cord cutters through one of the main missions, but for now, if it's early on, placing a marker on the BT will allow you to travel past them without having to stop, pulse, stop, and pulse. Or, you know, when you have the cord cutters, you'll be able to sneak up to them and know exactly how far you need to go before you cut their umbilical cord. So place a marker on the BT to help you navigate through their area. 
All right, so let's talk about some hermetic grenades. So once you get these, it's best to keep a couple of them on you. You can easily throw them in your grenade pouch. But let's say, for example, you're going through a BT area and you get caught. They are going to try to drag you into the tar. If they are successful, you'll end up having to fight a BT mini boss or run away. So what you want to do is you want to shake them off and then you want to aim the grenades at the ground and then they will not be able to grab you. This will be an easier way to basically run away and get away from them. You'll have to shake them off somewhat, but it won't be as bad as having like four or five of them on you. You can easily throw the grenade on the ground and then get away from them without any trouble at all. Next, we're gonna talk about increasing your stamina up to 25%. When you go into your private room, you can examine the table and drink three of the energy drinks. This will increase your stamina by 10, 10, and 5, and it can be boosted up to 25%. So every time you go into your private room, you want to drink three of the energy drinks. Now, I do this every single time, and there is a funny little cutscene that will happen if you drink too much of the Timefall version. So I'm going to leave that in so you can check it out. Just remember, every time you're in your private room, drink three of those energy drinks. All right, so next we're gonna talk about fast traveling, and I have a video on that in the description below if you wanna check it out. But you will be able to fast travel when you get to the central region. This is very useful because you can fast travel to almost anywhere in your network, but there are places that you can't fast travel to. If you are playing online, there are a lot of safe houses right next to those areas. So you can fast travel to those safe houses that other people have built or maybe you built. But being able to fast travel will save you a ton of time and you will be able to do it as soon as you get to the central region. Just interact with the umbrella in your private room to fast travel. Next, let's talk about a quick autosave. So besides going into the menu and doing a manual one, you can force an autosave by simply holding down the O button and resting. You'll notice at the bottom right corner of the screen, it'll say now saving. So you can do this quickly by just simply holding down the O button, resting, and then kicking in that autosave. Just keep in mind, you won't be able to do this in certain areas. All right, so next we're gonna talk about the double jump. So if you're not carrying too much on your back, you can easily do a double jump. You'll just simply have to press X twice. So when you're going over a river like I just did, you can easily just double jump over it. Now you won't be able to go over too big of a river, but you know it will be able to get you at least halfway through it and then you will be able to have the stamina to be able to get through the rest. But being able to double jump was kind of nice to have. Next, we're gonna talk about the container repair spray. This early on is very useful and you wanna keep at least two on you. Now you can spray items that are on the ground like the one in front of me or you can turn it around and spray the items that are on your back. So early in the game, you're definitely gonna to wanna to keep at these two, especially if you don't have any kind of vehicle or any kind of network that you can use like zip lines. Once you get those up and running, then you would only need about one container repair spray. But this is something you're definitely gonna to wanna to keep at least two of them on you in the beginning of the game. All right, so let's go over a couple more things like giving out likes. If you use someone's structure like a safe house, generator, or zip line, Give them as many likes as you can possible. It will show your appreciation for the stuff that they build. Zipline networks, I can't tell you how useful they are in the central region, especially in the mountains where it's snow. I set up a bunch of zip lines so I can get to all the areas very quickly. So that is something I recommend doing. And last, playing online. If you have the access to do so, it's highly recommended. Through your open world, you will see so many structures that people build and it is going to save you a ton of time, especially seeing those safe houses, generator, and zip lines. All right, so if there's anything that I miss, please share it down in the comments down below. But other than that, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to support the channel, and I will see you next time.